What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks, and I'm your host, Marty, and today I got a country music version of the podcast. Don't forget to put on your cowboy boots and your spurs <laughs> <laughs> and pull that hat out of your closet, because right now I'm sitting with Jimmy <laughs> Allen. You got a brother yeah. from Delaware yeah, man. doing country music. Yeah, bro. So, like, growing up, like, all my daddy listened to was just country, and all my mama listened to was just Christian music. So, like... Yeah. For so many years, it's all I listened to, and I just fell in love with it, man. Yeah. But like, what my music is, it's like I take a country lyric, wrap it in like a, a pop rock production with like pop and R and B melodies. Yeah, and that's kind of what that's your pocket. What what my music is. Yeah. yeah. Man. So what were your dad be doing when he was listening to country music? Like I imagine my dad, you know, yeah. playing basketball. Like I growing up, my dad did shit like he, you know, we went fishing. Yeah. We went, but we was fishing to Tupac. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah. And like nah, bro, we fishing to like classic country. Like my dad, <laughs> he played slow pitch softball. He smoked cigarettes. He drove a truck, like all that stuff. What type man. of truck? Like a, man, he had if a, I had money. Man, I go, tell he had you a what Ford ninety eight. Man, and uh, like even to this day, like my dad just got his leg amputated. He got a camo prosthetic leg, bro. Like a camouflage? Yeah. Because so if he goes hunting? Nah, just because he's a redneck. <laughs> <laughs> So many people are trapped in this, in this, in this, uh, uh, this limited mind space to where you, you can't progress. You can't grow. There's you no room for growth. You can't grow. Meaning, yeah. oh well, since you've always done this, that's what you should continue to do. But I think that's a that's a that's a true way to fail and never yeah, be successful in life. Yeah, dude. If like, you keep doing the same things you've been doing, <laughs> then no you time. never won't be end up in a different place. So yeah, you never want to end up where you want to where you want to be. I know you had to have moments of doubt in mm -hmm. this in this time span. So like when you're in this space and you're creating, you're going from band to band, mm -hmm. solo, trying to find your voice. Like yeah. when did you know, when did you feel that you found it? Man, I feel like everything clicked for me 2014. Which is what? How many years um, into? Man, Seven years into it. Okay. Seven years into it, 2014, um, found out I was about to be a dad. My, my, my grandma died, like, right before, so she couldn't meet him. So I felt it got better for me when I hit my lowest, and that was my lowest yeah. uh, uh, emotionally because music wasn't going anywhere. I was about to be a father. Me and my grandma was really close, lost her. I remember I came to L.A., Went to L.A. Kings game. So a brother at a hockey game. Yeah. So you a brother? <laughs> you a brother? You a brother at country music and a brother that came to L.A. not to go to a Lakers game or a Clippers game. game, but to come to a Kings <laughs> game. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, man. I went. <laughs> I went, man. I was at my lowest, and I was just like, I think I'm done with this music thing. And I was like, All right, God, if you want me to chase this dream. Give me something. Give me a, a trophy, something tangible I can I can hold on to to let me know you know my voice deserves to be heard. Yeah. So soon we walk in, they're celebrating the L.A. King Stanley Cup yeah. from the year before. So they yeah. give me this replica ring. So that's why I always you know always wear it. And it was after that I went back to Nashville because they, <clears throat> they were giving out replica rings to everybody there that that were in suites and stuff like that. And you just happened to be in a suite today. Happened to be in that suite that and, those, that, and that ring. Was the moment where you felt like it was a sign for God? That yeah, man. That, that champion? Yeah, man, because I was at my lowest, and I was like, all right, if you want me to keep going, give me a trophy. Give me something tangible that's I can hold on to. That's an actual trophy. Yeah, man. That's so, a sign, bro. Did you ever think about turning back around? I thought about it, but I couldn't do it. Because I have, like, younger siblings that look up to me. So for me, it was, like, the fear of them giving up on their dream because okay. I gave up on mine Ooh, is what kept me going. That'll man. preach. Because yeah. I was there... Example, I was the one that was supposed to go out and, and, and pursue something so that, you know, they can have someone to aspire to be or yeah. someone that kept them motivated. Would you ever hey, collab you with someone like a 2 Chainz? I want or to. You wanna, like, That's you wanna, my plan. You want to cross over yeah, man. and bring in both sides of the world? Yeah, dude, because for me, I feel like music is music. You know I agree. I and mean? I feel like the only thing that separates music is how you rap it, and that's the, the production. Yeah. Just the, the lyrics can stay the same. I could take my song Best Shot, put it with a hip-hop production, I could take and put it with a rock production. You should do that to prove song. something. You should do that. Man, I would do a song with Two Change, Yay, Cardi. You could be Yay in Wyoming. Yeah, Yay yeah, just went to Wyoming. But they ain't want no more brothers coming out there. After he went out there, they shutting it down. Like God damn it, Kanye <laughs> fucked it up for all brothers. Jimmy up. can't come to Wyoming because Kanye <laughs> came in first. Music. I do cut you. They're like, uh, all right, well, we'll give you a shot. Right. But if Jimmy messes up, no more, <laughs> and you're shut off. <laughs> Best shot, when you write your yeah. songs, when you write, what's your creative process? Like, that song, for me, as an athlete, I understand it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Right away. Did you think it was going to be a hit? Man, I, I, would, I hoped it would be. Yeah. I, and that, and that's just, you know, honestly, man, I, I knew I liked it. 
And I thought if somebody gave it an opportunity, it could do something. I was just, at that point, just hoping. How many songs had you written up to that point? Man, hundreds. Over 600 songs. Yeah, so you're just Easy. writing and singing and writing man, and singing. You know, ever since. So it took you 600 songs to find that one? Yeah, man. And then luckily within that 600 songs, you know, I found other songs from my album. Yes. Uh, uh, other songs is going to be on probably on my on my next album. So what's the key? So you look at yourself as a go-getter. Yeah, you have to be, man. Yeah, so like what's the key in that hustle? Like how did you keep that hustle even though you got turned down or things weren't going your, your way? Like how do you keep that hustle? The one thing I kept telling myself is... They're not intelligent enough to see what I see. Oh, so you're just like, I'm, I'm, they're d- dumbasses, and I know how great That's I am. That's how you got to look yeah, at it. These motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you got to be like, man, obviously they don't get it. Yeah. Obviously they, they don't see this because in every creation, in every art, like, for instance, like, you knew going to, you know, to the draft, like, yo, I'm, I'm dope. Somebody better step up. You know the work you put in. I know the work I put in. I know the work I'm going to put in one day. And I get it. Everybody won't see it then maybe it's not meant for them. But the yeah. person that will see it, getting 100% every day in, day out, and everybody else just wasn't intelligent enough to see it. And that's what I used to tell myself yeah. at the time because when you're at your lowest and nothing's going on, you got to find things to motivate you to keep going. Because I had zero dollars in my bank account, didn't eat for two days, waking up in a Chevy Malibu, washing my clothes at a gym, working overnight stock at a Walmart, mm-hmm. and I was a janitor. You got to find something to, like, keep motivating you how do i get up in the morning nothing else really mattered nothing. that was just there's just, just ways to continue to get a check so that yep. you could chase your dream and i would never work a job longer than so six is months gas money studies have been shown that after six months you get comfortable so i never wanted to get comfortable in a job i've been married for almost eight years now. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma used to eat muskrat is that it's, like a cousin of a raccoon it tastes like chicken yeah oh, come on man everything that's the t- blackest thing everything tastes like say. chicken bro <laughs> I was a punter. So you're a black punter too? <laughs> yeah. Black country singer, <laughs> a black punter, a black guy that goes to hockey, that goes to hockey games, a black guy that wants to visit Wyoming. I ain't want to get hit, bro. I was just saying, that's just a lot of... I, <laughs> bro, I was like 115 in high school, Your bro. trajectory to becoming a country singer is, makes sense. <laughs> I think I love all that love stuff. I love, like, the chick flick TV shows from, like, Gossip Girl, to, like, Grey's uh-huh. Anatomy. So, like... And, and then when movie. you say chick flicks, are you talking about like love and basketball? Are you talking oh, about love and basketball is one of my favorite movies. Or yes, I love you. Both. P- okay, you know what my guilty it. pleasure is? What? Saturday morning lifetime marathons. Those are fire. I'm a Hallmark Christmas movie kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs>